Welcome to the Heat, where online coordinator Larry Lambert and Sun staff Richard O'Rourke will be discussing Senate Bill 520, which concerns online learning. You will both be given 30 seconds each for an introduction. You'll each answer one question and then have 30 seconds for a conclusion. As our special guest, Mr. Lambert. I get to go first? Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Senate Bill 520 essentially is a good bill for what has been long overdue for online learning. What, is, what Senate Bill 520 is designed to do is to increase the offerings for online learning and centralize the effort. And also, the state is uh, giving $16.9, $17 million to start that. And it is designed to do a couple of things, and that is to partner with academic senates and with private online offerings to offer online courses in the 50 listed uh, general education courses that students need to have and that are impacted the most to get into the CSU and UC systems. And it is designed to, to keep the integrity up by working closely with faculty and academic senates. Mr. O'Rourke, go ahead. Well, <clears throat> I think this bill would really do more harm than good, um, you know, inviting for-profit <coughs> online providers into the system of education. Um, there's just, it's, um, it's foreign. They don't mix, you know, education. You're not supposed to worry just about the bottom line, making profits, making more money. And, you know, inviting, you know, companies like Udacity or Coursera or the Cardian Learning Group, that's just, it could, you know, it could go very wrong. Not only that, but, you know, it, it could hurt high school students coming into college or, you know, hurt college students later on in life. Okay. Okay. Now I'll ask you a question, Mr. O'Rourke. Um, don't you think online learning is the future? I mean, kids in Burma could be, could be viewing a Harvard lecture. You could do that on YouTube, though. I mean, it's not necessarily, I'm not saying online learning is bad in and of mm -hmm. itself, you know. There are advantages, you know, you may be a full-time worker, you know, you could take an online class, you could work to get a degree, you know, and uh, you don't have to do that with the constraint of having to come to a physical campus and, uh, you know, at a certain amount of time on a given day. But the problem with that, though, is, you know, just like I said, just as an example of how wrong this could go, the New York Institute of Technology partnered with the uh, Cardian Learning Group. Now, the Cardian Learning Group was operating Ellis College. Ellis College was an online college. Now, uh, Ellis College was kind of piggybacking on uh, New York Institute of Technology's accreditation. So if you took a class at you know, Ellis College, you could, uh, you could actually work to get a degree from New York Institute of Technology. Now, the problem is, you know, Cardian Learning Group is private, for-profit. And they were caught paying recruiters uh, a certain amount of money, you know, depending on the number of students that they convinced to enroll. And that was actually against the contract. The contract had an incentive compensation ban because it was, it was a federal program. The grant, student aid, the FAFSA, everything that applied was federally run. So as a result of that, New York Institute of Technology almost lost their accreditation. Southwestern, we got off probation two years ago. You know, so we shouldn't be doing this. Okay. Mr. Lambert, maybe you can respond to that now. Well, Mr. O'Rourke, you need to uh, think about one thing when you're talking about online and, and, and different educations. You have to p compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges. What you are talking about is comparing a privatization partnered with a very low ranked New York school in a group of entirely different demographics for what we have over here on the West Coast. If you try to take privatization and mix it with public, public institutions, there's only one way that's going to happen, and that's going to have to happen with an agreement with the entire state, not just between two colleges. Here, for example, our statistics show that 25% of the students that take our online classes here, which by the way, we're the fourth largest online uh, course offerer in the state of California. We got commendations from the accreditation team about how good we are using so few resources. 25% of those students 
took online courses because if they didn't, they wouldn't be able to come to school. So it's just not a matter of convenience. It's a matter of whether their students have an opportunity to learn or not. Senate Bill 520 provides that in a very much of an overdue and underrepresented um, area of alternative delivery and learning that is increasing almost exponentially. Okay, now I'll ask you a question, Mr. Lambert. <coughs> Do you feel that this bill um, is harmful to teachers? Because won't it replace them with electronics? That's a that's a good question, um, Mr. Quintana. Quintana? Yes. Good question, Mr. Quintana. Um, I don't think that this bill is is at all trying to replace teachers here. Especially that's been the. That's been part of the uh, suspicion that faculty have had forever, ever since online started. And at this college, we started online in 2001, and it's grown from one online class now to where we have, um, there's about 2,500 sections that are offered, and 1,800 of those sections are active on our Blackboard online learning system. So it's not like it's replacing anybody. What it's doing, it's a, it's giving faculty an alternative to regenerate their careers in order to use creative learning strategies in order to to get rid of the limitations of the four walls in a, in a regular classroom. It offers them the ability to create a whole new dynamic to where they can continue and really improve their careers and also improve the learning styles of students because they're learning differently now than they even were five years ago. This bill is going to offer that right away with a lot of money from the state to provide it, which without that money, we would never even see this bill or the partner bill to this SB 247. Can you respond to that? <coughs> well, about the, we would never see any of this without, you know, the more money coming in. Do we necessarily need more money coming in? You know, this is Catherine Liu. She's the director of the uh, UC Irvine Humanities Collective. She coined the term administrative bloat, you know, um, where teachers, maybe faculty doesn't have enough say, so you'll have administration with its runaway spending. You know, I spoke to Eric Mag when I was writing this news article. You know, he's, he told me last year the VPs of four departments got pay raises while, you know, faculty and other employees were facing, you know, pay cuts and layoffs, you know, and uh, it's and, uh, also what Mr. Lambert said about, uh, you know, uh, students maybe not having the opportunity to, to take the class, and that's why they have to take the online class. We don't really know whether or not they would choose between the two. If they were given the option of face-to-face -face class versus online, you know, may, whether they would choose face-to-face -face because our class offerings have shrunk so much throughout the years, uh, and we still don't have them back. We still have fewer teachers, you know, far fewer teachers than we did, you know, back in 2009 or in 2007, which was, I think, the best budget year for this college. And so what we really need are ground-up reforms, you know, how the administration here spends money, how the administration within the, uh, the community colleges spends money, you know, within each of the uh, public higher ed uh, agencies spends their money instead of inviting for-profit uh, companies in and, uh, you know, possibly allowing them to, you know, have a university or a college like South Lexington be put back on academic probation. Okay. Um, can, now I, can I read, talk to, the, talk to his point? Or um, well, we'll um, you both will have 30 seconds. In this, this At the end to rebut all of this? No. Um, all of the misinformation that he's been saying? <laughs> okay, don't worry. You um, well, word. since, since you went first in the introduction, uh, Mr. O'Rourke will go first in the conclusion. And, uh, you know, uh, just to recap, you know, I just, I, I don't think that this would really solve the problem of impacted classes. Sure, you know, it would bring in more listings, but at the cost of basically selling ourselves out, you know, and uh, as far as high school students go, where every class is structured face-to-face -face all day, every day, going into an environment where, one, you have to pick your classes, where it's up to you, and you know, having to structure your own time and time management, they're not taught that in high school. They're never, not really taught that here. I mean, the outreach program here isn't really as good as it could be. So um, there's that. 
And aside from that, if a student spends, you know, maybe too much of their college career online instead of going out talking to people, you know, and exchanging ideas in person in a classroom setting, then that you might just miss out on the not the opportunity because you are getting the information, but in forming ideas, mental growth, you might not get that on a discussion board so much just mm -hmm. because it's not face to face. Okay. Wow. I, think we can conclude this. I wish I had more than 30 seconds to talk about this because this, there's so much more information <coughs> that we'll be talking about. Statistics show that uh, faculty who are actually involved in online er, 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 education prefer it to uh, traditional classrooms because of the creativity that's involved. And also, you keep mentioning a discussion board and the fact that discussion boards are now becoming kind of archaic. There's so many other really positive uh, software programs like VoiceThread, like uh, Prezi, like uh, Google Hangouts, uh, CCC Confer, and I could go on and on and on about those things that completely circumvent the, the discussion board, which is a static uh, discussion. It's an asynchronous discussion between them, and that is the discussion board is only designed for uh, academic discussions, not anything that's any free-flowing or anything dynamic, which is what the center point is of, of designing online courses. And you keep talking about, you know, we keep talking about the money and some stuff that's involved. You said that the money was being bloated with the administration and also with spending money in the wrong places. I agree with that 100%. But that's about all that I agree with you on this. Is that is, it's 100% trying to get money in the right areas. For example, right now, for the past eight years in the Online Learning Center, for handling 1,800 courses per term, we have one full-time and one three-quarter time person. We don't have an instructional designer, I do that. We don't have an extra trainer, I do that. We don't have a tic ticketing support system, I do that, and the other person does that. So the money needs to be spent in the right areas to build the resources in order to build a high quality online system and online program for all of the students that are coming in here. Students learn differently now, they take the information they go out and they make it relevant, and then they come back and they talk with the faculty. The learning system, the learning paradigm is changing. In five years from now, we're not going to understand or not going to recognize how things are being taught right now. We're not going to recognize it because students and faculty in an online environment have to be collaborative and they have to feed and work off of each other instead of trying to be faculty standing here giving information and stuff. But trying to get everything online, if you do it right, it's a much more dynamic and much more creative process than, than it is. SB 520 is trying to get the, 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 the money into the right hands. But uh, I agree with you, and I'll tell you one thing, is that if they try to do privatization with this bill, then this bill is gonna be dead on arrival as soon as it hits the Senate floor. It is gone. So essentially, it's a good thing, but it's gonna take a lot of work and you really need to revisit the information that you've got and find out what the truth is instead of suppositions that are done by others. Okay. I think we may have went over the 30 seconds, but that's fine. <laughs> okay. Well, I'd like to thank both Mr. Lambert and Mr. O'Rourke for the discussion. Um, that was the heat. Uh, fo follow us on Twitter. Subscribe to us on YouTube and visit the sun.com. Thank you. <laughs>